Good morning everyone. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to build a gasifying wood stove using these basic parts. A Kirkland coffee can, the Starfrit utensil holder, uh, the accessories are these uh, two trivets, uh, metal straws, the drain, the drain plug, and uh, some extra parts here, the center punch and or the bottle opener. Uh, the gasifying wood stove uh, is excellent. It provides heat, light, uh, can boil water just as fast as uh, a normal white fuel stove or a propane stove, uh, which is uh, great to know. So uh, let's get at it. The Kirkland coffee can, uh, you can get this at Costco, is the right size for this gasification uh, stove that we're building today. What you need to do first is remove the uh, foil label from the outside of the can. Side. And, I, and on the first burn, a lot of this glue gets burnt off, so uh, you don't want to breathe that in. One Kirkland coffee can. There you go. The next item we have is the Star Frit utensil holder. You can get this at Walmart. I picked this one up for $13.47. The Kirkland coffee can is also around $13. Bucks. Uh, we also have two trivet holders for $2 bucks each, picked up at the dollar store, a 7 inch and a 9 inch and also the metal straws you can get at the dollar store for four bucks. All right, uh, let's get this all good. This came with a rubber gasket that we took off and you want to take the paper off of this one as well. I just used uh, hot water and a scrubby pad to get the uh, peel off and the glues off the uh, can. Next thing you want to do is widen these vent holes up at the bottom of the Star Frit can to give it more ventilation. And, uh... The next thing we're going to do is punch holes around uh, the outside of the can. If you don't have a center punch like this cat here that makes marks in the metal, you can use simply a bottle opener like this and go around the can on your one inch marks. With uh, putting the holes in the bottom, you can either use the bottle opener technique like I've done here or center punch. Use this as a marking tool and if it isn't going through the can, then you can use uh, a drill and a bit. Um, for the bottom holes here on the Kirkland can, I prefer to use a 3 8 and on the bottom of this vent here I used a quarter inch. So essentially that's it for these two cans for preparations. In my studies of rocket stoves using different styles and such uh, from everything from simple colander fires which work really well and I'm going to show you that in a bit but what happens with colanders I find there's a lot of smoke with the gasifying wood stove is there's virtually no smoke. The one thing though is you have to watch is there's uh, your combustible material be it twigs, uh, dried kindling that you can get at the gas station or wood pellets. I find that sometimes uh, it chokes out at the bottom so what I like to do is use uh, these uh, drain plugs because it's got a lot of holes in it. You get these at the dollar store for about 25 and then you take this stuff off here and then you've got this and this sits over top of the holes at the bottom to keep your combustible material off the bottom. Uh, the beauty of these, the Kirkland can and the Starfrit um, can is this. You don't have to do any modification to the can. It fits right inside and the beauty of it is the lip here keeps the can just off the bottom here so it has a chance for air to get in the bottom and in here. 
what happens is when the fire is lit, the smoke gets pulled down, down the can and then gets reburnt up here in these holes here. See these holes here? It gets reburnt there. It's a beautiful effect and I'm gonna show you that here very shortly. So essentially that's it. All right, so now we've uh, completed our stove. Uh, again, uh, I just wanna say how amazingly simple this is. Uh, both cans fit together so you don't have to do any modifying to either of the cans uh, except for the holes in the bottom. Again, we didn't even need uh, a drill for this. We just used the, uh, the can opener and it worked, uh, it works really good. I'm very happy with it. Uh, my last can, I used the drill. Uh, that was great, but then there was also a lot of uh, uh, edging that popped up and so you have to file that down. But I see here now with the, uh, the can opener, it makes a great, uh, uh, great hole and there's no uh, metal burrs uh, sticking up. So my next can after this, I think I'm gonna use the, definitely use the uh, uh, can opener. Again, I'm using this uh, drain here at the bottom to uh, keep the combustible material off so it's not choking out. We've got these two trivets. Uh, what's nice is when my bride and I go camping, uh, we put this all in a, a kit and take it with us. So it uh, allows us to uh, make a fire on the go. Uh, this is a, a hobo stove, as they call it, uh, a design, I believe, from the 30s and such. Um, uh, what's nice is you only need a can opener to make it happen, and I've seen uh, uh, this uh, person online, they're able to do the, the whole modifying of two, like one with a soup can and a pasta sauce can, and they make a, a stove, a smaller version of this, but it's still just, as highly effective. What's nice about this is due to the, uh, the, the air gap between the two liners is this side, uh, it gets warm but not too, too hot. Uh, so what's nice is when we have a, a wind guard, you can put your hands and your feet in here and they get toasty warm. Uh, sometimes the bottom of the can can get warm. That's why I've got uh, this standoff here to keep the can off, off the ground, especially if you're in the woods and such. We don't want to have any uh, stray fires. Uh, the difference between these, the, the colander uh, stove and this stove is, this does give off a lot more um, uh, smoke and flame, but also sparks are able to fly out of this a lot more. You'll see that here shortly. So between the two, I find this one's uh, very safe. Also, uh, don't throw out your lid. Keep your lid. And then after you're done, you can, uh, once the fire is out and the can is cool, you put the lid on and it keeps it all nice together. Uh, I'm very, very happy with this stove and it, it costs for less than $30. You can have this amazing stove that provides heat, light, uh, and it can boil water just as fast as your, uh, as your stove does. So let's get at it. Uh, I got, I've got this wood here from the, uh, the gas station. It's already drying kindling and I picked up a a bushel of uh, these uh, wood pellets for I think five dollars so uh, what's nice is uh, when you are using wood out in the uh, out in the wilderness out in the woods is uh, the natural wood uh, does tend to be a bit smokier and you'll see that uh, also sometimes the stove this gas stove will choke out so I got the metal straw to help just keep it going uh, provide some air to the uh, bottom and then get it going again. So uh, let's get at it here. So I also use this uh, fire starter uh, material. It smells great. You get it at a Canadian Tire. It's made out of uh, a natural uh, product uh, as such. So let's see. So uh, I like to make TP here. As you can see, both stoves work really well. There is a lot more sparking happening here uh, on the colander fire. Uh, with your first burn on your 
gasification stove and such, please do it in a well ventilated area because there's still some glues and such in the metals, or not in the metal itself, but with the wrapping and stuff that needs to burn off. So uh, don't be too near it on your first burn. So we lit these basically at the same time. And you can see now we're getting this great gasification action here where the wood gases are being pulled down, sent up the side and reburnt here on the holes on the outside. That's why it makes that nice uh, ring effect. Uh, so we use the second trivet for here to put on like that. And then we put our, our, our crepey cast iron pan. What's neat about this is that the legs fit right inside the grooves of this crepe pan. So what we do is we, on Fridays when we have our date day, we go out and uh, uh, out to the wilderness and make uh, this uh, stove fire. And then we bring sandwiches or wraps and then we uh, cook them up on here. And, it, and it's so quick. And also we have, because the difference between these two stoves is nice, is that uh, the combustible material on the gasification stove needs to be below the gasifying rings. If it's above the rings, it disturbs the gasification process. So your combustible material needs to be under it. Um, oh yeah, what we like between the two is the colander fire is great if you want to keep feeding a fire, like if you like to keep uh, stuffing it, whereas the gasifying stove likes to be just set up and let it run down and consume its combustible material. What I've been experimenting with lately is working in combination with uh, the dried kindling <laughs> and the, uh, the wood pellets. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been experimenting with. And it's neat to see uh, the difference between the uh, wood and the pellets, but it's also nice to augment uh, augment the uh, my 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 fuel with the sticks and the the pellets. Both are great stoves, cost very very little. But what's nice about the Star Fred and the Kirkland can is they fit together so seamlessly. Now look at that, that's a beautiful gasifying process. Highly recommend uh, the metal straw for blowing smoke into your fire to get it going. Anyways, I think that's about it, guys. You know, enjoy your time out in the woods, but play safe. Make sure that you clean up your mess. What's really nice about this stove here is uh, the gasifying stove is uh, when we come back, there's no, no footprint. I've got little saddle bags that I bring the kindling in and we stick this in the uh, backpack. And uh, this much wood will provide us um, almost an hour of cooking performance, you know. So it costs very little. Again, if you're gonna use natural woods, natural twigs, um, they will give off a bit more smoke, as I find. Uh, and remember when using the gasifying stove to uh, ensure your combustible material is below the gasifying rings, okay? I'm very, I'm very impressed with this uh, stove's uh, performance. Uh, so anyways, that's about it, guys. Enjoy your time out there and uh, play safe and we'll talk soon. All right. Love you guys. Bye for now.